Good morning. Welcome to Caneville United Methodist Church. We are worshiping in person and online today. It's great to have everyone together. We are celebrating one of our sacred acts today with Holy Communion. We invite those worshiping from home to find some bread and juice or water in preparation for later in the service. Holy Communion connects us to Christ and to each other making us the body of Christ redeemed by Christ's blood. Let us join in worship using our bulletins sent through the mail or found on our website, canevilleumc.org. Are we ready? Let's pray. Holy God, we come before you thankful that you love us as we are. We are creatures of your hand. We are a community formed by your spirit. You are the potter, we are the clay. With your sure and loving hands, shape us through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you feel Accordingly, please stand for our first hymn, Hope of the World, number 178, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. be seated. I'd like to uh, sh share with you the, the psalm that we are going to read and, and a moment to reflect um, just why we're picking the scripture, um, the gospel reading as we are. Um, I'm using the narrative lectionary and um, for us who know the ABC lectionary, it's, it's re, every year it's a new cycle, and there is a D lectionary that's a little bit 
different, but this is a narrative lectionary which I found recently. And it has in this season just a psalm and a long gospel reading. And we read the whole gospel of, of lesson M in its form, it's, it's a full chapter of Luke that we'll read today. And the reason why is because we see more in the context and it's, it's neat to see it this week and it's important that we see it next week when we see Luke 16. So if you wanna read ahead and kinda figure out what Luke 16 is about next week, you can do that during the week. So the Psalter, the Psalm is always read in um, back and forth um, liturgically. So I'm gonna read the light print and your P for the people. So here we go for Psalm 119. And we're not reading the whole Psalm 119. It goes a little long. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. My lips will pour forth praise because you teach me your statutes. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. Let me live that I may praise you. Let your ordinances help me. Amen. Our banner today, the symbol is the gavel. On this third Sunday in Lent, we highlight another symbol on our Lenten banner, which rehearses the last events in Jesus' life. This event was Jesus' trial before Pontius Pilate. It is symbolized with a gavel. Pontius Pilate was a Roman official assigned to govern Judea for the Roman Empire. History would quickly have forgotten his name except for one prisoner on whom he was to pass judgment, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus had been betrayed and taken by the temple leaders. They decided to put him to death, but they did not have that authority. Israel was conquered and controlled by the Romans, and only a Roman could sentence a Jew to die. Pilate was unimpressed by the charges brought against Jesus. The story in the Bible makes it clear that Pilate considered Jesus innocent and wanted to free him without offending his accusers. The trial was a mockery to justice. So Pilate offered to have Jesus whipped and released, but that was not enough. Jesus' accuser warned Pilate, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. So Pilate, still believing Jesus to be innocent of any crime, condemned him to be put to death. He claimed he himself was innocent of Jesus' blood at the same time that he sentenced the innocent Jesus to die. And now Jesus must die because of one frightened judge who gave into the wishes of the crowd. Pilate will be remembered for as long as there is a Christian church, but not as the innocent bystander as he claimed. The Apostles' Creed proclaims that Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate. Also, the Nicene Creed states that Jesus, 
for our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate's gavel will always be part of our story. never done the scripture reading before, so this might go very bad, but I'm going to try. <laughs> um, a reading from the gospel according to Luke chapter 15, 1 through 32, the parable of the lost sheep. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the phrase, Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, which one of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. The parable of the lost coin. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The parable of the prodigal and his brother. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place through the country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself and said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Addison, and Peggy, and Connie, too, for, for bringing us those parts of, of the service that put us right in the frame of mind to evaluate what is going on here. What is this happening before us, this voice of salvation that's coming through very clearly? I believe it is God's dream that every one of us be saved, not just us, but the whole world. Can you agree with that? Yeah. It's, it's not just for the people who have heard the word today. It's for everyone out there. It's for every soul that, that has ever heard it all about God and is looking for Jesus somewhere in their life, and God is longing for that person to be saved. So Jesus tells us these three parables in succession to show us how this salvation thing works. So I invite us to, to, to look at each one of them. First, we're looking at the lost lamb. Now we're at the end of lambing season, and I have, I have heard some stories of, of the lambing that's going on. Uh, one of our, our families uh, had 60 new lambs, and her brother had... 90 new lambs, so they had 150 new baby lambs on their farm, at mom's and dad's farm up north. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. 150 lambs, how do you keep track of all of them? It's worse than herding sheep, I would think, but some lambs might be a little curious of where the holes in the fences are and try to get out, right? So you're thinking, you know, and would you go out after that lamb? Of course you would. Not because, you know, I mean, not, not because you love that one more than the other 149 lambs, but because that, that lamb is the first domesticated animal ever and could never survive outside on its own. We have seen pictures of sheep that have gotten lost and were never found and how big their wool was and they finally died because they could not right themselves up. It, it's a tragedy. So we know we have to go after those domesticated animals I, um, and not because of predators. And then we read Isaiah 53, and it's, it's a wonderful passage about salvation. And there's one line in there that always hits me because the, the uh, Handel's Messiah hit that over and over again. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We know we're supposed to be the sheep in this parable, right? Because the lost lamb is us. We are prone to wander, and though we can't live without God, we know we need to be found by him. And the best part is that we know that Jesus is our shepherd. Jesus seeks out that lost lamb and then puts him on his shoulders and carries him home. And don't you just love the, the picture, the old picture of, of Jesus carrying the lamb and the bright shining face and how he rejoices. So we get a picture here of, of Jesus, God is the shepherd, we are the lambs, and there's rejoicing. Now we take it to the next level, to the next parable, and it, it tells us a little more. So there's this this woman who probably um, either probably a widow, but she's the homeowner, and she's got ten gold coins or ten silver coins, and she loses one of them. Now that might be the rent that month, you know. I, I like to read into this story; it's one of my favorites. And she she looks and looks for the coin. She's sweeping through the dust to get that last coin, which is another metaphor for for dirt. And we see that, you know, there in the dirt, the dust, the, the sin, the mortality of us all, uh, we, she finds the, the coin. And then she rejoices with her friends. Now, how would that work if you lost your cell phone? So think about it in terms of losing your cell phone. So I lose my cell phone. I'm frustrated. I've looked everywhere. I, I come to the office. And I look there, I call my cell phone from the office because I don't have a phone, a landline at home. Or maybe I even ask someone to call for me. Can't find it anywhere. Look in the car, look back. Track. Finally, I sit down and I pray about it. And then I find it. So would, but would I call y'all and say, rejoice with me, I found my cell phone. You just look at me and say, been there, done that. <laughs> 
So I'm thinking that this woman has been telling her friends about the lost coin and how she can't pay the rent unless she gets that last quarter. And, and as she, she finally gets it, she rejoices. And then what does Jesus say about the rejoicing? It's not just all heaven's rejoicing. It's the angels are rejoicing in heaven for the lost coin coming home. See how we're, we're broadening this? God not only longs for us in God's heart, but all of heaven and these heavenly beings are also in concert trying to get us to come back to God. Now we get to the third one. We've had a lamb and an inanimate object, and now we actually get to a, a sentient person who has free will, which is that's us. We, we identify with the prodigal son or the elder son, one of the two, but we identify. And so here the prodigal son goes, um, is, is going to ask dad, and so we're asking God for, um, for our inheritance. Give me everything and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go make something of myself. And you can understand that. I mean, how many of you have adult children who, who are ready to, to jump the nest and, and they say, well, you know, I'm going to need, you know, some extra padding in case I can't find a job for a while. I'm going to, you know, I, but I need to go out and find myself. And so they go out and find themselves and they do it all wrong, you know. And, and so this prodigal son did it all wrong. In fact, he was very selfish and squandering. He really didn't have a clue at how to, how to live life. But does he come back right away? No, no, he still thinks he can, he can manage. And he finally gets to the point where he, he's, he can't feed himself anymore. And he's looking at the food in the pig pen. He's, he's obviously a hired servant, hired man somewhere. And he's looking at the pig food and thinking, man, I'd love to eat that. <laughs> And, um, of course, it wasn't just grains at that time. They was probably, you know, leftover corn and all this other stuff. But as, as we look at that man, we're thinking, yeah, that's me. I keep trying to do it myself over and over again. And I keep thinking I'm going to give up this habit and I'm going to stop. I'm going to add this pro um, good thing. And we, we can list the things that we started even Lent with thinking that I'm going to fix my life and get things back on track now, and this is how I'm going to do it. But it never works. So we, we have to realize that turning back to God is the best thing that we could do. And where does God come in? And where does the Father come in on this story? God comes in as the, the one who's seeing his son coming from far off, and he runs to him. That's the feeling we're looking for. I know you've tried to give up lots of things in your life and tried to improve your discipline for prayer and your discipline for, for reading the scripture, your discipline for doing you know, the good things, the healthy things, the exercise, you know, and how hard it is to get to some of that. But, but if we turn to God with all our heart and repenting, we realize that it's the right thing when God's running to us. You get that rush of, yes, this is it. This is the time. I'm actually going to be able to commit to this because I'm walking away from it, walking towards God, walking towards something that is drawing me through all the longing. And what kind of rejoicing then happens? It's not just all of heaven rejoices. It's not, you know, all of the angels are rejoicing. No, this time it's a real party. He dresses the sun up, puts jewelry on, got to do some bling, you know, and big banquet, fatted calf, all that stuff. Big party. Now, there's the other person in this story, the elder brother, which I know church folk identify with really well. In fact, I have preached this preached on the prodigal son many times, and the comment I always get is, but I'm that elder brother. I'm the one who has always been faithful. So how do we deal with that? How do we be the elder brother, the 99 sheep, the nine coins still in the purse? How do we deal with that? And it's because we have never been 
lost. We've always had the blessings of God. We've always known the, the great feeling of being in, in the Father's arms, that we don't get what it's like to have lived out there. Now, some of us still do live out there. Some of us are still battling a return home. So we may be one or the other, or maybe we're both. Maybe we, we spend some time in the arms of God, but we tend to be like that sheep finding the little hole in the fence and wandering off because we really, we don't really know how to take care of ourselves very well spiritually. And further, we want to judge. We want to say, well, at least I'm not as bad as the drunk on the street. At least I'm not as bad as the one who can't get off cigarettes. At least I'm not as bad as, and you can put your own words in there. We're picking up uh, Pilate's hammer, Pilate's um, gavel, and we're, we're putting it down just like he did declaring who's innocent and who's guilty, who's worthy of salvation and who's not. And remember, this isn't what God wanted. It had to happen like this. We had to have a symbol in front of us so that we would know that's not our gavel. That's the world's gavel. And God wants salvation for all. So God's vision is that we wouldn't go out there and try to judge because when we're doing that we are we are the prodigal we're going our own way and not God's way when we get to holy week we start singing the dramatic songs and we're going to sing one of them today but were you there when we they crucified my lord and alas and did my savior bleed and when Isaac Watts wrote this, alas, and did my Savior bleed. He, he wrote, alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. He died for our sins, and yes, it was us that put him on the cross. He groans for our waywardness and he longs for us to come home every day and after you've been out in the world not necessarily doing something bad you still need to come back like the prodigal son admitting that I, I totally forgot about you God this week I went about my my whole thing my school my um, my business my getting my errands done and didn't once think about how God was involved with my life but there are ways to put God in your life every day. We're going to talk about the, that this week in the, the devotional on breath prayers and keep taking God with you. But for now, we just need to turn back to God. And he set a banquet. We have the Holy Communion to celebrate, and yeah, it's a little bit different than we usually celebrate, and yeah, it's not the fatted calf and all the, the side dishes and the, the beverages. It, it's just a reminder that God has still provided a feast for us, and someday when we feast at his heavenly banquet, we will know the full meaning of salvation. Let's just walk away from that sin today. Come home. Come home to this table of forgiveness for God has set a place for you, and it's a place of honor. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we have been lost. Oh, not every day, but there are some days when we feel very distant from you. We turn to you in our hearts today knowing that you receive us with a rush of grace, and you redeem us by the blood of the cross. Like all of heaven, we wish that we weren't the only ones hearing this word. We know that there are others in our lives, Lord, that we lift up to you now in our mind and ask you to, to rush to them that they might know your grace and blessing. We ask you to be with those 
who mourn the loss of their loved ones, comforting them with that same grace. Be with those who are injured and looking for diagnosis for, un, for mysterious illnesses. Open their eyes that they might see your pattern, your plan. Be with us all, Lord, as we worship in various places around this world with very tra various traditions and abilities to, to worship at home, and worship in person, to worship outdoors. Lord, we just give you thanks for all these opportunities. Draw us together and make us one with you, one with Christ, and one in ministry to all the world. And this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's take a moment to breathe deeply. God is good all the time. We want to thank God for the gifts of salvation with our generous giving, giving to God's ministry. And then we will celebrate Holy Communion together. Let us pray. Oh God, we recognize that we have been blessed with great abundance. In offering these gifts, May we be strengthened to proclaim your faithfulness and your salvation this day and always. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lift up your hearts, for the Lord is with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. If you will follow in the bulletin here. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, 
Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now I invite you at home as you get your elements together to put your hands over the elements and say these next words all together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. Let us say the prayer of Jesus together, remembering how around the world this is the same prayer that said, we are not alone, we are a big church. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are serving today for our bread uh, crackers, and also we have gluten-free crackers. If you would like one of those, just tell our ushers. The ushers will come by and, and offer you the to take something out of the basket. For our juice today, we use grape juice, and we offer will bring it by you and offer you to take one from the tray. We're trying to stay contactless, so. As soon as the usher has gone away, then, then you may remove your mask and um, eat, take your crackers and your, um, your juice. Now these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will the ushers come forward?
after all who had partaken, they prayed the prayers and they sang, sang the songs. So I invite you to pray with me. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith. Increase our love for one another. And let us show forth your praise in our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now let us turn to our bulletin as we we sing the song from our Lenten series of hymns, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. In the hymnal, it's number 298 for those at home, verses 1 and 4. very quiet right now. I think we're feeling the, the weight of the having been filled with the grace of God, forgiven and re redeemed for the work ahead. But I can tell you, heaven is rejoicing. I'm having a little trouble with my mask, but you know, that's nothing new. Oh, where's that stapler, Carol? <laughs> so I think we need to be happy about this. God really does draw us closer together and things are getting um, opening up. Many of you are getting your vaccines, and, and so this is a good thing. We're getting, we're, we're able to at least meet safely distant from one another, so this is a good thing. We are having lots of meetings starting up, so trustees are meeting today. Um, Wednesday, we are starting what we hope to become a pattern of meeting with the praise band, and then the following week, we'll try to meet with the choir. We've got some plans on how we'll stand around the room to practice. So if you would like to join our choir, if this is the year you want to try that, um, you are more than welcome, um, or the praise band. So, <laughs> Oh, so there we have a volunteer, Ben. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I think you're kind of busy. You have school, I know. <laughs> but we'd love to have um, anyone who, who has the time on a Wednesday to, to be a part of that. Um, and then uh, we, we start the monthly mission. Uh, we're at UM Corps this, this month, and later on in the month we're going to have a share a video on that because um, there's a lot of good material out there about sharing what our United Methodist Committee on Relief is doing. So be aware of that, and um, remember when you do a mission, uh, mark the, it in the memo of your check um, or mark it on the envelope so that we know um, how to put that towards mission. So th those are our announcements um, of my leaders. Anything else? Julie has one. Worship committee is meeting in a week, right? One more week and worship committee will meet. Um, so th those are our announcements.
All right, so now go forth with the love of God in your heart. You are able to share it with others, so go do that. Be a part of the world that is a positive, hopeful voice, for we already know who the hope of the world is. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.